An explosive political and corruption scandal is rocking the island of Puerto Rico. And as William Brangham explains, it is endangering the future of the island's leader, Governor Ricardo Rosseo. It's been like this for days. Thousands of protesters in the streets of San Juan demanding the resignation of their governor, Ricardo Rosseo. At times, they've been met with armed police and tear gas. The crisis engulfing the governor exploded this weekend after a 900-page trove of text messages was leaked and published by Puerto Rico's Center for Investigative Journalism. The texts between Governor Rosselló and members of his inner circle were repeatedly laced with misogyny, homophobia, and crude jokes. Targets included political opponents and the island's financial oversight board. In one exchange, Governor Rosselló called a former New York City councilwoman a whore. In another, the governor's chief financial officer joked about dead bodies piling up after Hurricane Maria. The leak led to the resignation of two members of his administration, but this scandal comes right on the heels of the indictment and arrest of two other members of the governor's cabinet last week on fraud charges. A Justice Department investigation into federal contracts led to charges against six people, including Education Secretary Julia Kelleher, who was arrested for allegedly steering millions to politically connected consultants. And all of this comes as President Trump and congressional Republicans continue to hammer Puerto Rican officials for their handling of the island's finances, both before and after Hurricane Maria. The White House issued a statement saying the unfortunate events of the past week in Puerto Rico prove the president's concerns about mismanagement, politicization and corruption have been valid. Puerto Rico's finances have been controlled by an independent oversight board since 2016, and the island is trying to restructure some of its enormous debts. Rosselló is asking Congress to send billions of dollars in additional federal money to support ongoing hurricane disaster relief and to support the island's Medicaid program. And in the past few days, Representative Raul Grijalva of Arizona has called for Rosselló to resign. Grijalva is the chairman of the House Natural Resources Committee, which oversees affairs in U.S. territories, and he joins me now. Representative, thank you very much for being on the news hour. As thank I you said, for the invitation. You called on the governor to resign. He does not seem, according to how he appeared today, that he is going to resign. Uh, do you still want him to go, and why? Well, I, I, I think, uh, as I said earlier, you know, it's, my, my personal opinion that he should resign is, is just that. You know, it's going to be the people of Puerto Rico that, that elected him uh, that, that helped make it, help him make that decision. And I think you've reached a, a, a very, very critical and very delicate point right now. As the committee that I chair looks at the PROMESA Act and how to reform that uh, to provide better support. Uh, for the people of Puerto Rico as we look at that Medicaid funding and making sure that it arrives and provides relief to the people of Puerto Rico as we make as we work with uh, on PREPA and make sure that utility company is running efficiently and accountable in an accountable way as we look at all those reforms that need to happen uh, you know I, I think you reach the point where you know you're feeding a narrative and the narrative that we've heard from the Trump administration and others we can't trust those people uh, they're not deserving of support and we saw that through the whole relief right after the hurricane how long and how much the people in Puerto Rico suffered because of that 4,500 plus deaths and so the list goes on and I think for him as governor if he stands in the way uh, at this point and I believe he does of his country and the citizens of the United States that live in the, on that island, uh, if if they if they are going to be withheld in terms of support that they need, we don't want to jeopardize any mechanism to bring that relief to the people of Puerto Rico. And right now, I think the central government of Puerto Rico needs to examine him, itself. I really believe the governor needs to examine himself as to what is the common good. And I think the common good sometimes is going to have to be the consideration of stepping aside. I appreciate what you have to say, that it's really for the voters in Puerto Rico to decide Rosales' exactly. fate. But it doesn't seem like he wants to go. And if he doesn't, doesn't that stand in the way of you persuading your fellow colleagues to grant the aid that, that all of Puerto Ricans say they desperately need? Well, I think it, 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 it complicates it in this way. 
it complicates it in that you know you're going to see more demand uh, for oversight, more controls on, on the part of the federal government of the relief and the assistance going to Puerto Rico. Uh, you're going to see uh, more restrictions and more strings to any support that goes there. Uh, and, and I think that's going to complicate it because you know, if we're dealing with credibility here, it's going to be hard uh, to convince Republicans and Democrats that uh, the central government of Puerto Rico is prepared and the agencies there are prepared to effectively and in an accountable, ethical, and non-corrupt way uh, deal with the relief that the people need. You heard, uh, I read the, a bit of the president's statement, which is, he's saying, in effect, you see, my criticism all along was right. The government in Puerto Rico cannot be trusted to manage their finances. Does the president have a point? I, I, don't, think, I don't think he does. He's been saying this from the beginning, but it does feed his narrative and, you know, the adage about people in glass houses certainly applies here, but the point being that uh, I think it, it, it feeds that narrative and it feeds the narrative about control, it feeds the narrative about people not being able to take care of themselves, and uh, the responsibility uh, for giving volume to that narrative and giving justification to Trump, unfortunately, falls squarely in the hands of this governor. Um, as you know, I'd like to switch gears just for a moment. Much of Washington has been consumed with the president's yes. racist attack on four of your colleagues, all women of color. What have you been saying to your colleagues about how you as Democrats ought to respond? I, I, I think we need to respond with, with, with a level of determination. You know, I'm a first generation American and, you know, through through whatever factors, here I am, a member of Congress, sharing a committee here. Who would have, my family wouldn't have thought it, my parents wouldn't have dreamed of this, but here I am. And, and I respect that, and I love that, uh, but, you know, I think what I'm telling people is about determination, because I think the, the, the uh, what we've seen and what we've heard from this president at the highest level is to encourage a division based on race in this country, and that is wrong and it is uh, anti-American, and, and we have to be determined that if we want to go in a different direction, we have to rid ourselves and cleanse ourselves of this particular malignancy that we have right now, which is divide our country based on race and hate. Uh, that is, and I'm talking about determination. I'm talking about the things that would probably are going to get worse before they get better. But at the end of the day, in this participatory democracy of ours, where we get a chance to vote as citizens, and uh, we have an opportunity to turn, turn this around and provide uh, a whole different direction for this country and take us out of the morass that we're in right now, which is uh, very painful to watch. And certainly for me and many sons and daughters of immigrants in this country, very painful to feel. All right, Representative Rahul Grijalva, Democrat of Arizona, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.